Warning, this video may contain content that may not be suitable for children or anyone else that is easily offended. Strong language, graphic content, nudity, bad jokes, and a possible idiot, aka myself, may be featured in the following clip. Viewer discretion is advised. You're not responsible for any damage that you receive watching this video. Hey, what's up, y'all? It's Zims, and welcome to If You're in Halstead, Kansas. Please never go to AVI Bridge at night. I don't know what that is, but we are about to find out. This video was recommended to me by his Foxy. So if you guys have any more recommendations, feel free to let me know down in the comment section. This is my first cryptic, I think, horror story channel. I'm not too familiar with it, but we're going to find out uh, and see how it is. If not, then we probably won't come back to it. But if it's good, then we might look into some more videos. But if you guys haven't already, man, be sure you swoop down to the description box. Call on a link. Go watch the video. So the entire time I'll be pausing and stopping and talking through the whole thing. This video is by Zach Baby TV. So if you guys haven't already, please head over and watch some of his content. Hit that like button, hit the subscribe button to show some support. But for now, let's get it. Every small town has that one rumor. Facts. One superstition. The kind that parents tell their kids to keep them from doing dumb crap. That's like for California, all the crackheads run fast. That's the myth that we have in California. My family moved to Halstead, Kansas when I was 13. And compared to the last town I lived in, this one seemed to have its fair share of superstitions. There stands an abandoned hospital, nope. once lively and used for the saving of lives. Now sat an eyesore to the town, stories of hauntings by all kinds of entities, young and old. The hospital had been there since the creation of the town, but on the opposite side of Halstead stood a bridge, riddled with foxholes. Unlike the hospital, the bridge had been constructed long before the town. If anything's still there when the town was built, even when the town before the town it was even there, get rid of it, man. Nine times out of time, it has bad blood. It has bad history. Somebody was killed on it. Somebody was pillaged or genocide. Something happened on there, bro. Just get rid of it and build another one. Was used as part of a war that raged on long ago. Everyone in town knew about the bridge. It was over the river that runs through most of Kansas. Bodies. Most kids in the town jumped off the bridge into the near shallow water waters below as part of initiation. Caught it. I myself have taken part in this initiation and spent most Hell. of my summers at that bridge. A large tree was uprooted during a recent flooding and now sits directly underneath the jumping point of the bridge, preventing anyone else from continuing this tradition. As the jumping off the bridge ended, it soon became a party spot for most of the older teenage crowd that populated the town. Turned Kept out secret. Forward. Not too many people even knew the place was still being used. That was until a group of kids hoping to go fishing for the first time since the flood found the Reinhard twins' disposed bodies. The Reinhard twins? The group of kids told how horrible the smell was once they entered the wooded area. Sound of flies buzzing and small animals running away alerted them to the spot instantly. Yeah, I heard about that. Detectives say there's no smell like a smell in a dead body. It's nothing that you can compare it to in this world. It's just a, a smell that you would never like to smell. That's why they put that stuff... I think it's ammonia. They put something right here on their nose so they can't smell it. There, underneath the bridge on a clearing of dirt, laid the two kids, torn to shreds, and their guts all spilled out. I was good friends with the brother of one of the kids who had found the bodies, so I asked him about it. He told me what little his younger brother's brain allowed him to remember, how the smell quickly overcame them, and the sound of flies, the sight of pure terror at what laid before them. How all they wanted to do was to run home and hide in safety. Facts. The vomit came from the others, and the stillness of the water almost imitated the kids' shocking state. After all the activity around the area calmed down, and the police deemed the place safe again, Chris suggested he and I go down to the AVI and try to find some evidence that perhaps the cops couldn't. Who's that frat Having guy? been a paranormal investigator, I had plenty of equipment to try and get in contact with the spirit of the twins, and I happily said yes. In our early 20s at this point, we had no issues with setting up plans. I brought the equipment and requested the whole weekend off in order to search the entire area with no reason to stop. We stepped out of Chris's Durango and set out on the trail that leads into the forested area. Durango's a truck, right? I suggested that Chris bring his younger brother along, but before I could even finish with my request, I could hear his younger brother scream, Hell no! from upstairs. Mm -hmm. 
He said he would never set foot back on that property, and no matter what we offered, he still declined. There we go, little brother. Shout out to the little brother. Let's get some hype in the chat for little brother. Bro, that's what I'm telling you guys. He already had that one red flag, and that was enough for him. He ain't going back. You can't pay him. You can't bribe him. I don't care what it is. Fruit snacks, cookies, whatever it is, bro. He's not going. 100% stay home watching Netflix, bro. Kick your feet up. Relax. You deserve it. You're a king. Having been filming the area of and around the site of which the bodies were found, night was quickly drawing closer. I set up the tent that Chris had brought on the spot that the bodies were found, and I began to do my tests in the hope of capturing any form of evidence that the children's souls were still around. Catching nothing, I decided to leave one of my night vision cameras outside facing the tent, just to keep an eye out on ourselves as we slept. As morning came, I packed up the tent and all the equipment and got prepared to set off again until I noticed one of my cameras were missing. I searched through my bag and the tent, but I couldn't seem to find it. Red flag one. I realized I was missing the camera I set up outside the tent, and when I went to go grab it in the spot that I had put it in, I noticed it was no longer there. Red flag two. Thinking the wind of the night possibly knocked it off the tree, I searched the entire area, but found nothing. Red flag three. I grew incredibly pissed off with every minute I couldn't find the dang thing. Finally, Chris came up to me, and he handed me a destroyed remains of my camera. The case, the lenses, all of it was destroyed. Red flag four. I was furious, so I went to grab the SD card to put it into another camera to find out what had happened, and discovered that the SD card was no longer inside my camera. Red flag five. Somebody had come out in the middle of the night, stolen my SD card, and destroyed my camera. My blood was boiling at this point, and I tried to blame Chris for the issue, showing me everything he had on him. There was nothing that he had that could have destroyed my camera like that. And with no large rocks anywhere nearby, I had to believe him. He told me that he found the camera a good 100 feet away from our campsite, near the edge of the water. I spent the rest of the day trying to figure out what could have happened, who could have done that to my camera, and why. We searched all day for any form of sights or any kind of markings that could lead us to what had happened to the twins. Having half of the area of the river searched and daylight fading fast, we set up camp once more. Or you can call the police and have them do a thorough investigation and you can find out what happened to them. Hmm? Hmm? Or you can just get out of there and go home safely and not get stalked by some serial killer or Bigfoot type creature in the woods. Hey, I'm just saying. This time, I set up another one of my cameras hidden far away from Chris, still facing the tent. I wasn't sure why, but I still didn't trust him. We were the only two people out in those woods, and him. he was the only other person besides myself who knew about the camera. But... I told him that I had the piss, so he wouldn't go and check to see what I was doing. Why well, invite somebody you don't As trust? As I came back to the tent, I could see Chris kneel down in front of the tent. I kneeled down next to him to try to figure out what it was that he was doing. Just then, I saw the handle of a knife in his hands, with the blade stuck inside of his stomach. Bro, what happened? I whispered loudly, stunned in shock, but still trying to keep my voice down in case the person who did this was nearby. I helped Chris back up to his feet, still trying to keep stable. With a shaky voice, Chris spoke. He could be anywhere. He's huge. We need to go now. He's huge? With Wait Chris a being a bit smaller than myself, I was easily able to pick him up and carry him back to the opening of the woods. Sus. The adrenaline pumping through my body. With one solid step, I broke through a fallen branch and crashed down to the ground just below the bridge. With what strength left, I got back up on my feet and carried Chris back up to the bridge. I couldn't go on anymore, collapsing to the ground. The fear of a giant man behind me terrified me. Trying to sneak a good look behind me, I felt a sharp stab hit the side of my back. Increasing pain growing strong. The pain of my ankle seemed to disappear almost instantly with the puncture wound. I looked around for something that could have stabbed me, but for the grasp of a hand now gripping my throat, shortening my ability to breathe. I was lifted up off of my stomach with the ease of one hand. Suffocated. Damn, who is it? Jason Voorhees? He said lifted him up with one hand. God damn, bro. This is Friday the 13th, bro. One hand? Fuck, bro. You might as well just call Jesus right now and tell him to hey, make a reservation, my boy. That's it. Damn. With one hand, bro. You gotta feel like a beta after that, bro. I wouldn't even feel like a man no more, bro. Damn, bro. Your whole, all your pride is just gone when a grown man just lift you up by one hand, bro. Getting now. I stared my attacker in the eyes, noticing, dumbfounded, that the person who was stabbing me and choking me and whatever the hell out of me was Chris. 
His laugh sent a wave of fear over my body I had never thought I'd feel. His eyes looked glossy over, cold, lifeless. As he began to speak, the voice I heard sent another wave of fear throughout my whole body. The voice I heard did not belong to Chris. Chris? Oh, young one. Why are you out here? This is not your home, nor is this the body of that of the child anymore. It's mine. The roar what? of this menacing scream caused a ringing in my ear, where everything else seemed secondary to the sound. With each speed and force, much like that of a roller coaster, I was thrown off the bridge. I could see the face of what I thought was once my friend, but now an entirely new persona inside the skin suit of my once good friend. The fall felt like it took forever, the wind rushing against my ears and the back of my head. My life began to flash before my eyes. Damn. I saw my first memories. My mother was still alive. My father was healthy again. My brother was not yet in prison. Yep, and died. all my best memories of my family, hitting the water hard, a rush of water covered my body with a sensation of ice. I felt frozen in time. There was no longer fear, no longer any pain. All I felt at this point was a feeling of lifeless floating, numb to everything except the piercing cold that violated the side where I had felt the pain of the knife, what seemed like a lifetime ago. I've heard of that. Some people said when they were getting ready to die, or on the verge of dying, they don't feel anything. It's just, everything's just calm. Like, it just feels normal. You don't feel pain or anything. You just, it's just normal, which is kind of weird, bro. So it kind of was like, I don't know. what. I don't know if that's just the body's reaction to like, hey, you're dying, or the body's reaction to try to stop you from feeling the pain, or make it numb so you don't bleed out as much or what but i'm not a doctor or a scientist or anything like that but i think that's kind of crazy how a lot of people when they're dying they have the same kind of symptoms or uh, same kind of uh, stuff happen to them when they're getting on a, uh, getting ready to die so yeah he was, he was definitely close to dying i have to believe that whatever took over chris's body thought me to be dead if i'm honest at this very moment i too thought i was dead the bleak feeling of nothing was all i felt worse than any depression i had ever felt before i bet the next thing I remember was waking up, inside a large wooden cabin, oddly familiar. I felt as if I had been here before. I was now in bed covered up, the heat of the fire coming from in front of me warming what little cold still remained. I had no strength, nothing left in me to pull myself out of bed I currently resided in. Quiet footsteps began to get closer. Run. Honestly, I thought it was whatever it is that took Chris's body, but as the door opened and my body filled with fear. I saw a healthy bald man with a sweater and camo jeans on. Mr. Clean? In his hand were two cups of steaming liquids. I tried to sit up once more, but again, I found myself with no strength to do so. No need to fear, Joseph. I'm only here to help. Hot chocolate? He offered me. I happily took it, noticing stiffness in the side of my back. Perhaps that's why I couldn't get up. I thought to myself, Did he find me in the river, bring me here, and bandage me up? Wait. How do you know my name? Mm -hmm. He looked at me, confused. His smile felt warm and comforting. Why, Joseph? I'm your Uncle Tim. Don't you remember me? I knew I noticed him from somewhere. Uncle Tim? I only met Tim a couple of times, but my dad never seemed to like him much. Told us he was weird. He's Uncle a Tim spent most of the day telling me why he was out here and what it was that had done this to the twins, Chris and myself. Wendigo. He called it a skin shifter says they could take over a person's body and control them to do as they want. They are an old legend, once thought of a superstition, but as the war ravaged the land it once called home, it became enraged and laid waste to the rest of the man who lived here. It would take the bodies of soldiers and kill anyone who came close to them. He kept going on about how the skin shifters would take over and anyone who came across his land. I felt terrible. All I wanted to do was figure out what had happened, and from the sounds of it, it had cost my best friend his life. So Chris my uncle dead. was able to take me out of the woods and drop me back off at my house. I never went back over to the AVI, and honestly, I regret it. Maybe if I had gone back, I could have prevented my best friend from slicing his throat. I miss him. He was such a great friend. All he ever did was care. If I could give you some words of advice, 
never go to the AVI Bridge in Halstead, Kansas. And never play detective either. Stop playing police officer, man. Just let people, let the police do it, man. Skin shifter. That's why, man, I don't do anything extracurricular like that, bro. Chris, see? The little brother right now at home eating fruit snacks, bro. Bowl of cereal. He probably knocked out having a good old nap. Here he is out here getting stabbed and thrown into a river by Jason Voorhees or wherever that was. His friend Chris, a.k.a. Jason Voorhees, threw him into the river, bro. And then somehow Uncle Tim just happened to be around and find him. I don't know. I, I don't know. What? <laughs> I don't even know, bro. Like, this story tripping me out. I've heard many things about it in my day. This should have been reported to Sam and Dean Winchester, as they currently reside in Kansas as well. I hope you enjoyed the story tonight. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Share me with your friends, and again, like always, spread me like butter. What the fuck? <laughs> Spread me like butter. I'm gonna end right here, guys. If you enjoyed my content, man, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, support your boy, man. Thank you guys so much for stopping by and watching Zach Baby's video. If you guys want the content, man, be sure you swoop down to the description box, click on that link, go watch the videos in the entirety. You want me pausing and stopping and talking through the whole thing? Thank you guys so much, man. Keep doing what you guys are doing, and the videos will keep coming. Thanks again, Foxy, for your recommendation. Like I said, if you guys have any recommendations, feel free to let me know. Uh, there's a lot of good content creators out there, and this dude's pretty good, so we might check out some more of his content later on. But yeah, let me know down in the comment section which part of the the story kind of creeped you out. I just, I kind of got lost for a second only because Chris killed him, but then when did Chris die? But at the same time, so did, was he the skin shifter the whole time or did he kill Chris that night and took over his body? And if he did, where did he take Chris? And there was his little brother a skin shifter too. Bro, where, and where did Uncle Tim find him? Was it nighttime? Was it daytime? Like, I don't, I think it's night. I don't know, but I don't know. Maybe I missed it. But let me know down in the comment section. You know, I'm kind of slow, so you guys bear with me. But again, thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you guys next time. If you guys are new to the channel, my name is Zims and welcome to the Crow Snack.